Okay, so uh, we we are now having another section. Uh, so we will have a uh, Jeffy from uh, um, from conference. He is the senior solution engineer uh, from the Greater China region. So he will be talking about we think the financial service with data in motion. So um, Jeffy, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, you try to share share the screen and then see whether it works. Okay, sure. Can you see my slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's it's good. And then your voice is loud and clear. So uh, let me pass the time to you. And thanks, uh, Jeffy. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Lam. I am a senior solution consultant at Confluent. Uh, today, I'm going to share with you a trend that we see in the financial services industry, uh, data in motion. Uh, nowadays, we talk a lot about sharing data with ecosystems. Uh, we see regulators asking banks to open up more data for sharing. Uh, we have seen non-traditional competitors uh, tap into the data from their ecosystem for social media or e-commerce to provide financial services. And we know that traditional banks are catching up as well. Uh, we have seen banks partnering with uh, mortgage or home-finding online applications so as to gain insight in their mortgage prospects. And we have also seen uh, uh, banks reaching out to even school ecosystems uh, to understand the behavior of kids while their parents are still making financial decisions for them. But as we work with our uh, traditional banking customers, they always ask this one question. How can we leverage our decades of banking data in order to get competitive advantage in this sharing economy? Um, having an external API layer is just the first step, but they have huge investments into different kinds of segregated software stack over the last few decades, and they don't even design to talk to each other or share data among each other, let alone sharing data to external ecosystem where the user behavior is uncertain for the bank, and it often requires high throughput, real-time requests in an extremely agile business model. Uh, that's why leaders like Citibank are shifting their thinking from everything at rest to everything in motion. Um, uh, for them, it's a vision of what if we uh, know of every single event that has ever happened to the bank and make the smart decision on this, right? Like a money transfer is an event, a click on the mobile phone is an event, or the actual delivery of a food delivery service partner of the bank can also be a useful event depending on how you look at it, right? So, and these events are moving very fast across the bank infrastructure and they can trigger and interact with downstream system and processes all the time. But if we look back at the current data infrastructure, uh, they don't really track the events that are moving fast across the web in this diagram, right? They are mostly designed for data at rest, uh, uh, which means they often save the data first into database or data lake and then decide what to do with it, right? What they translate to is often a series of batch jobs, trickle down the data from one system to another with T plus one, T plus two or even more, right? And uh, a lot of banks are using uh, service API uh, to expose the data and services or to access the data or services, but they still need to wait for the data to get there first. And that's, that's why it's not totally sufficient, right? And so how, how does Citibank deal with data in motion? The answer is that it required both API and underlying Kafka protocol. And uh, just imagine that you have all the core system of your bank. Uh, they always have new event and transaction happening every second, right? Imagine you have all the events right to one central platform. 
And this platform will store the entire history of all the events and expose them either in form of a REST API or in form of the native Kafka protocol, then every department from the bank can look into the data, process the data, analyze the data, or do machine learning on it, right? And this is how you can keep track of the moving event and, and make smart decision on it. And of course, you need governance in order to make sure that every member in the, in the bank can use the data properly. And in fact, it's not just Citibank. Uh, our top 10 uh, US banks are adopting this data in motion journey, as well as, of course, a lot of major banks across the world as well. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, today I'm going to use the word Kafka and Confron interchangeably uh, because uh, uh, our co-founders at Confron are the uh, original creator of Apache Kafka. Um, so just, just treat them uh, the same in, in this presentation. Um, and of course, the data in motion journey is not a one-day journey. It is a multi-year journey. And it often starts with mainframe data. Uh, the banks often want to publish all the core banking data on this platform in real time. And the first use case is often multi-channel customer experience. It's kind of like somebody swiped a card to make a significant purchase, like an iPhone, and you want to offer, offer him a loan in real time uh, at a rate that is personalized for him, right? It might be a one-year installment of 2%, something like that, right? Um, and you correlate them in real time with other data in the bank, like the customer data, right? And as the bank start to tap into their core banking data and multi-channel data in real time, uh, they start to do real-time uh, pattern matching, such as fraud analytics on that, right? And this is usually how it involves. And the nice thing about all these evolution is that uh, all the mainframe processing start to offload somewhere, right? When So the, um, the bank can now uh, reuse the IT budget instead of on MIPS uh, to innovation. And as more data are onboarded on this platform, and everyone can now try to innovate with every other people's data, right? For example, uh, from the ecosystem, if the online home finding app are seeing a, a, a customer trying to look for a house much bigger than what he has currently, as this event arrived at the platform, all the interested uh, departments in the bank can have the event-driven microservices and workflow triggered and do whatever analytic and innovation that they want, right? Uh, they might want to combine their analysis with their own data. Maybe they find that person is setting up a new family, or maybe he's having a new kid, and that's why he needs a bigger house. Um, and as the bank continue to modernize the mainframe and legacy architecture, and of course they start looking at cloud and microservices, right? And while at the same time, they all know that the legacy on-premise infrastructure will still be in the bank for years to come, and might be for decades. Um, so here they will need to ensure that data are consistent everywhere in real time and enterprise-wide. So here they will use the native Kafka protocol to replicate the data across the board, right? So as they start, continue to decouple more and more functionalities from legacy application onto the cloud, onto microservices, uh, they just need to add that portion of data to this single bridge. Uh, and they will they are sure that the data will be there on the cloud for them. And as the bank moved to the cloud, uh, many of them would like to leverage the scalable cloud infrastructure for machine learning, uh, both for training and also for exposing the machine learning API or the data API. 
Here, they often have the challenges in data preparation, which uh, typically takes up 80 to 90% of machine learning lifecycle effort, right? Uh, the first question that they have is, how can our data scientists explore the data across the enterprise to find what they need or across the ecosystem? Uh, here, they will leverage the same data breach that I just mentioned uh, to get the data on demand, right? And the second question that they have is often they need to write duplicate transformation coding in order to transform the raw data into uh, the, the data that is needed for the real-time machine learning engine or the batch machine learning engine, right? Because uh, typically those are very different system. So even if it's the same transformation or cleansing that you need, you still need to write two different batch of codes, right? That's, which is very time consuming and it impact the machine learning life cycle. Right. Uh, with Kafka, you know, because we can do stream processing uh, on the fly and we have connectors that can uh, place the results into different system, you only need to write it once. And some of our uh, most advanced customers are moving to data mesh, right? Um, you know, this is, uh, it is a very new paradigm, although a lot of you must have already heard about it. This is uh, uh, very hot in the last two years. Um, you know, the idea is that instead of having one single monolithic data platform, right, why don't we break it down into small pieces uh, owned by each domain, right? Um, so each business domain owner will be responsible and accountable for the data product. They have to make sure that other people like it, uh, other people use it or even pay for it. Um, they, they need to make sure that all the SLA compliant or data qualities uh, um, meet the standard that is required in the bank. Um, and uh, uh, the, the whole, whole idea is that they want to make sure that the people who are most familiar with the data have the responsibility and the ownership and the accountability, um, and which will facilitate innovation across the board, right? Um, and, and here, uh, they will break down the uh, single uh, conference platform that I talk about into multiple platform and share the data with REST API or native Kafka uh, protocol underneath. And of course, they, uh, in, in that way, it's also easier for them to extend to the external ecosystem because everything now is smaller. Uh, the, the most familiar people are working with the data and do the data interchange with external business in a, in a more agile way. Um, as we said, uh, we are already seeing data in motion as a trend in the financial industry. And, um, and of course, they are all in a uh, different uh, journey, uh, different uh, position in, in this journey uh, from early uh, exploration to sharing mission critical data across line of business uh, to eventually use it as a central nervous system of the bank so any one event can trigger any innovative services across the bank in every department right and and of course as they move along this journey uh, they are also become more ready not only share data internally but also uh, with the ecosystem in a more agile way. Uh, before I close this presentation, um, I would like to share with you a couple of real use cases uh, globally. Um, by the way, we, uh, we have another uh, workshop on event-driven microservices with Confluent uh, right after this session at 11 o'clock. Uh, it is a workshop one, uh, run by another colleague of mine, uh, Naveen. Uh, uh, please uh, attend and, um, and, uh, and, and, and get to know more about the data in motion journey. Um, now, in this example, right, um, there is a global bank. They want to push the real-time fraud analytic uh, program from the mainframe and legacy system into, uh, into the cloud, right? So, uh, so what they do is that they... Uh, publish 
the mainframe core banking data plus 30 to 40 uh, other course legacy system onto the conference platform on the left. And then they will use the native uh, Kafka protocol to replicate the entire set of the data to the Google Cloud to another uh, conference platform uh, over, over there. Uh, in this way, of course, they save a lot of MIPS and money from the mainframe and legacy uh, databases. And at the same time, they can do the real-time uh, fraud detection uh, right away without waiting for batch processes. Uh, another example is another uh, top 10 global bank. Uh, they uh, essentially, they are making uh, Confluent and Kafka the, the central nervous system of the bank, right? Uh, essentially, instead of uh, using uh, batch jobs, which they used to for most of the system in the past, they have all core system publish data in real time into the Kafka platform and correlate the event and make this smart decision on it, right? Um, so this is uh, uh, how they uh, achieve the data in motion uh, paradigm as the, the new thinking. And, and with that, um, that is the end of my presentation. I would like to open up for questions. Yep. Okay. For, uh, thanks, Jeffrey. So uh, it's a very spiritual uh, sh uh, sharing. So uh, you share quite some uh, uh, use cases and quite some uh, user scenario that may consider the data in motion. So uh, actually, we all love challenge. So uh, how when we apply this kind of cases, uh, especially when you are talking about the financial services, uh, do you see any common pattern maybe for example, in Hong Kong, uh, how maybe what what is the major difficulty for them to adapt those uh, maybe data in motion pattern? And then do you have any quick uh, suggestion uh, how to uh, tackle them so that they can move the first step? Yeah, I, I think a lot of the pattern in Hong Kong that we see it's quite similar to what we see in APEC or even worldwide, right? Um, you know, mainframe uh, modernization uh, is. Uh, often a topic uh, uh, that the banks are interested, you know, uh, and, you know, because, you know, after all, it is the most important data and it is very hard to access in the past, right? And if you start thinking about what you can do with the mainframe data, if you combine it with multi-channel and real-time capability, right, a lot of the business will start to understand and, and they, they all know that it is a trend, right? Um, so it, it will be a very good start. And usually when we talk to our customer, right, a lot of them already have a, a, a considering cloud, right, and or already started uh, quite a while, right? And now the, the bridge to cloud scenario that I described and the microservices, uh, event-driven uh, services I described is also very common, right? Now, the one nice thing they like about that is that, uh, when you talk about having event arrive from mainframe or multi-channel or other department and trigger other micro, uh, microservices, they see that the producer and the consumer are com completely isolated from each other, right? Uh, which means that they don't depend on each other and every department can innovate uh, in their own way, at their own pace as long as they can see other data and and they know how to make use of it right and that that is very powerful and and i think that will be a, a good way for for the bank to to start thinking about uh, how to decouple the business business domain as well Okay, so uh, maybe another another question that uh, we generally heard about is that, okay, we do have uh, some good technical thing to help to address uh, some of the uh, technical issues or or, 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 or or some of the pattern issues. So maybe uh, how can you, maybe for example, we may have some business user here, maybe people's business sponsor here. Uh, how can you share maybe, okay, uh, uh, once we adopt the data uh, in motions, uh, maybe mm -hmm. what kind of uh, new use cases you can unlock so that they can have a more business value thing can be driven so do you can can you supplement a bit on on that side as well uh, uh you mean uh how to uh innovate uh, more yeah. business case or yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. New, uh, how can this uh, unlock some new use cases uh, so that they can um actually better leverage this, this kind of technologies and then maybe 
help them to maybe as I said uh, there, there may be quite some business user here so how can they better understand this and how can they link up to some uh, practical mm. use case uh, and then they can use this kind of pattern uh, to move forward especially in the API or data ecosystem yeah 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 there are, there, are, there are quite a lot of use cases that are that are quite interesting that we have found right like for example one one of one of the customer is using that for real-time credit uh, limit increase, right? Uh, you know, the scenario is kind of like uh, your your customers swipe the, uh, the, the your credit card, right? And then they they get rejected. And what they find is that one third of the time is because they're running out of limit, right? And of course, you don't want them to take out another credit card from another bank to complete the transaction. This is all we do. We, we do it all the time, right? And you want to uh, inform him and offer him the real time credit limit increase, right? Mm -hmm. And so they will continue use your credit card, right? Like this kind of uh, um, uh, scenario, we have a lot of it, right? You know, an another customer is, is using that to detect the um, the click streams on their mobile application, and they actually find that a lot of the time people visited one of the the long uh, real time uh, long uh, pages, but they never click on it to schedule a phone appointment, right? So, mm -hmm. so they they find out that you know why don't we uh, look at that moment of excitement, right, uh, of the actual end user, and quickly do real time computation uh, based on the customer profile, right? For the good ones, we want the support center to call them right away. Might be schedule a phone appointment and talk about it, or even complete the loan. Uh, uh, application right away with them, right? So, so that's an, another example. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of banks are, uh, you know, if they really look at their click stream, you know, the data in motion in terms of click stream, they will see uh, millions of uh, clicks on their web page or mobile pages uh, every month, right? You know, to think about how to capture business, a uh, value business uh, amid like millions or even hundreds of millions of clicks, you know, it. The, the the sky is the limit yeah okay got that so uh, yeah i think it makes sense so there should be a lot of ideas from the business side how to uh, address or try to get some information and it's now with the lead uh, technologies such as uh basing the data emotion so that we can unlock some of the loose use cases so um i believe that if some of you are uh, is interested to know more you can reach out jeffy and also try to attend their section i i, I see i see this should be the 11 20 they will have a workshop a workshop uh, more on the practical section so if you are interested feel free to join the section and then try to learn the hands-on example from them okay so uh, Jeffy, we, we have also have uh, yeah we also have a another session uh, tomorrow dedicated mm -hmm. to uh, APEC banking use cases yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if you are interested in that, uh, try to uh, don't miss that out. Try to check the agenda, uh, tomorrow and then attend that session. So it will be having more supplement as well. Okay. So, uh, we just thank for Jeffrey for your time to share, uh, your 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 thoughts and also the content. Okay. Do you have any final word? If low, then we can actually uh, pass to another sections. Thanks.